Hello and welcome to MH Weekenders. I'm Robert Hicks and this is Strength in Numbers with Aldo Kane and Jason Fox, aka Foxy. Guys, welcome. Hello. How's it going? Um, would you, for the pleasure of our viewers, um, introduce yourselves very briefly? Aldo, you wouldn't mind going first? Yeah, my name is, my name is Aldo Kane and um, yeah, I'm an adventurer, explorer type person and um, I know Foxy from a few years back. I'm Foxy, Jason Fox. Uh, I've done a bit on TV. I used to be in the military and I do a bit of adventuring as well. And I'm trying to disassociate myself from Aldo Kane. <laughs> Not happening. Well, guys, thank you anyway for um, being a part of this. Um, I don't think we can start any interview without talking about what's happened over the last year. Um, how has lockdown impacted you guys? Um, I think uh, for me, it's... It, yeah it's, it's been it's been hectic because I, I normally travel quite a lot with work so it was um a big set of anchors on and, and spent quite a lot of time at home three months without working and um fell through the gaps with the whole sort of pay and all that sort of stuff but um you know ultimately in the bigger picture you know I, I you know I didn't as yet get the virus and, and didn't lose anyone close by so I, I have all that to be thankful for yeah, my I'm I'm sort of the same. It's sort of, you know, I was away actually when all the when it first kicked off back in uh, March last year, wasn't it? And um, I sort of rushed back. I, what I was working on got cancelled. I sort of rushed back from New Zealand back to the UK, and then it locked down. But I sort of embraced it. Really, had to sort of deal with what I could deal with, and that was just keeping myself and my mind busy training and riding it out and then work came back actually when people could when people worked out what was needed to be done to get work done sort of like got back at it over the summer months and then obviously back end of last year it went into another lockdown and just sort of sat it out I, I actually got I actually got COVID really uh, yeah and um just grizzed it out no it was it was um it was odd. I just lost my sense of taste and smell actually, and then a um, bit of a headache, bit bit lethargic. But I didn't. It wasn't like a, some people have got it bad. I would suggest mine wasn't. But yeah, that sounds was... that sounds like how you normally are, mate. <laughs> what no taste and a bit lethargic. <laughs> um, everyone talks about coping and finding what worked for them. Is there anything you did any like coping mechanisms or, or anything you learned from perhaps your time in the forces, which you took into like what's been an awful like 12 months i um i i basically blocked aldo's number it was <laughs> <awful. laughs> no nah. nah, i sort of just had a routine going made sure i exercised and um you know just was was busy in different ways did a bit more reading i, I do you know what i got i got comfortable with being bored i think boredom's a, boredom's quite important actually people are scared of it and try and shy away from it but it's a decent thing to have it balances your balances your head out just to have a bit of time to sort of like think and plan other things as well really i think we we kind of get used to in back certainly in the military days you have everything planned out for you hour by hour day by day week by week year by year um so for me that's kind of like how i even when i'm back now you know i'm back home for three weeks four weeks at a time i plan that time almost hourly you know i go get up in the morning, I'll do phase or, or exercise first thing in the morning. I'll have calls for two hours. I make sure I've got an hour outside. So I just like block that time out and give myself that time to do whatever that thing is. The hardest part for me in lockdown was blocking myself time to do stuff that was in my head, non-productive, like reading. Um, you know, like I sit down and I get agitated, want to do something and I, I guess it was quite a learning curve to just actually sit down and, and be calm. I mean, in our, for the viewers who don't know, in February, we did a series of talking heads, didn't we, between you guys? I mean, the videos now between them have got a million views, a thousand wow. comments. They are amazing comments as well, all so positive. Um, was that February? It was February, just before, yeah. I'll tell you, I'll tell you, what, I'll tell you what COVID's done is it's made everything before it seem years ago. Yeah, yeah. Okay. <laughs> Um, Aldo, in the final part of the video, you said there's only three things we need. Um, daylight, getting outdoors and social interaction. Three things which arguably the majority of the country, the majority of the world really have been 
deprived of. How did you cope then? What did you do to keep on top of your mental health and physical health during those times? That's, that's weird, because if we chatted about that in February, that was before COVID was even a thing. Um, but those, those three things I learned from, from being locked up, essentially locked down inside a nuclear bunker under the ground for 10 days on my own in the dark. And I remember chatting to you guys saying that was it. You know, it's, it's like the things that you take for granted are actually the, the, the building blocks, the foundations to good mental health, and they're free. You know, it's not a gym membership. It's not um, expensive trainers. It's, you know, it, it's none of that stuff. Well, actually, what it is is being able to exercise, having the ability to exercise wherever you are. Um, it's about seeing daylight and and being outside, which was hard in lockdown, and it's about human interaction. And, you know, essentially, that those three things were kind of taken away. So for me, I was having to find a way of, of how to do that. You know, at the start, we were exercising in a, houses and then when it you know uh, sort of slackened off a bit we were able to go out and train in gardens and parks and um but really like giving myself I coped with lockdown with giving myself a routine um sticking to that routine and then trying to get exercise trying to get outside and trying to to speak to people I mean we had I was fed up with zoom by the end of it I have to say <laughs> did you do any zoom quizzes uh -huh. I was doing Zoom quizzes with people who I haven't seen for years, and I'm thinking, I wouldn't do a quiz with you normally. Why am I doing a Zoom quiz with you now? <laughs> oh, I jumped on a Zoom quiz with you once. <laughs> you did? That's what I was talking about. No, there was a lot of, lot of that. I did I did one with um with a few lads, mate, you know, Fergie. Yeah. And, um, mate, it ended, it ended badly. <laughs> I don't think I've ever been so drunk. <laughs> yeah. Fun, yeah, though. that's... It was, it was hard, to, like back then it was hard to, because people, we, all the freedoms that we, that we are used to in, in the modern world, you know, were, were kind of taken away for the greater good of, of the population. And, and I think a lot of people struggled with that. And, you know, if you're, I remember from when I was living in London, you know, it's super busy, but you can be lonely and alone in one of the world's busiest places, and especially in lockdown. So it's no wonder now that, you know, we're, we're pushing on almost a year into it and, and um, you know, mental health issues are, are probably one of the biggest crisis tipping points that, that have ever been in the country. Mm. I don't know. Well, I suppose then, I mean, we, we sort of slag off Zoom, but I mean, at that time, there was, that was the only way of connection for a lot of people, right, wasn't it? Yeah, it was, it was good at the time. It still is good, to be fair. It's just, I read somewhere that it's actually more taxing on the mind to conduct a Zoom than it is to have a phone call really? or, or an in-person meeting. Because if you think about being in an actual meeting where there are people and you're sat opposite people, you can see people's body language, hand movements. There's, there's, it's 3D, do you know what I mean? Whereas mm. this is two-dimensional and, and everyone's, you know, in not, I mean, not now, because we're obviously having a discussion and we've done this before in person and we sort of know each other. But like when you're trying to conduct like a proper meeting and all those things are important to gauge where you're at, you, your mind apparently is working a, a million times more harder to try and work out what the right decisions are, how you should interact with certain people. It's bizarre, isn't it? How this, that like, oh, over a period of time, people start making these um, observations. Mm. Whether they're right or wrong, is it doesn't matter, but they've, they've come from somewhere. Yeah, well, um, obviously, fitness is such a massive part for both your lives. Um, how do you manage to stay on top of your fitness, or did you just sort of like go, "Well, this is going to take a hit for the next few months," or did you just try and make it work? Because obviously, we we're stuck inside our own homes, right? We're um, kind of we, so we're kind of used to like through years of of you know improvising, adapting, and overcoming. You know, you go somewhere, you know, and there's not a gym there, and you have to set a gym up. Um, or you go back to basics and you do calisthenic type work, you do body weight work. And Foxy and I were in um, Colombia, was it two years ago, Foxy, three years ago? Um, two. 17, yeah, whenever it was. And um, we went and we were doing, we were doing body weight exercises every day for that three or four weeks on that trip. And we were in mega good condition when we came back from there. Um, and that was just doing body weight stuff. So I think for me, it, it it highlighted that I don't need a massive amount of 
heavyweights and CrossFit type exercise to stay in, in good nick. Yeah. You know, I was I had hardly any kit. It was good out there because there was a lot of um like kids' playgrounds that don't get used. So we were just clambering around these playgrounds, like mucking about doing loads of pull-ups and stuff. But for me, I've it hasn't really taken a hit, and I've got just as decent workouts being in the house and using, you know, people underestimate resistance bands. Mm. <clears throat> Those things are awesome. They like if you could if you like think outside the box of them and have a few extra add-ons like door jams and that. Yeah. You can do an awful lot with those resistance bands. I think it's, it's an interesting point because people, people get so hung up on the gym and obviously it was, it's devastating for the gym to close, but it, it, it does show that you can still get a decent workout and you keep on top of your fitness at home or for that hour a day, right? I think there's, there's two things there. You know, one of them is, yes, the practicality is you can move a gym into your home and lots of people have found that's been better. There's no travel time. You know, there's, you know, it's there, you can go anywhere that, you know, it's, it's, you can do it two or three times a day if you want to. But I think ultimately, you know, a lot of people go to the gym to socialize and to meet and to be part of that group and that collective. Um, and that's, you know, that's almost, if not more important than actually doing the, doing the press ups and, and the shift in the tin. It's the community as well, isn't it? I get a lot from going to the, the lads I go and see and, you know, chatting, you know, sometimes you're chatting a load of rubbish, but at least, you you know, you, you're there socialising, you're with people that are like-minded. It's good to it's good to do that. And it, it's something I'm looking forward to. It's something I was looking forward to when we were, you know, when we were in that in that phase of lockdown, whether it was one, two, or all the restrictions that come thereafter. Any um any moments where it was got it got really like a bit dark and it's like, well, this is just a, this is a struggle now. Was there any moments? Because I I think I found I found the, the latter part of the year the hardest part, knowing that we were sort of cl- you know when they announced the vaccines and you there's hope and then you get pulled back a little bit. Like any times which you sort of struggled a bit more than, than others. I don't. Um, yeah, you got I, me. Oh, thank you. I um, no, not really. I mean, no, no, you know, no more than usual. You know, the only things I'd struggle with are the normal things like, you know, stuff going on, whether it was admin stuff that I hadn't caught up with, you know, and I get a bit stressed because I hadn't cracked something I wanted to. But I think I've been, I've been subject to sort of like being in situations like this because of the military, whereas I, so I can manage my mind quite well and I know what I need to do so I don't don't think it's had a massive impact on me and that's not me bigging myself up it's just something that I've been able to sort of over a period of time is learn how to deal with it and so and I'm a big believer in um not not getting overly phased out by things that are not in my control because and ultimately because of that i just roll with what i can roll with so yeah i'm not saying that that's it's, it's never going to come and whack me but as it stands at the moment i've been okay and i've just sort of managed to keep myself busy and keep myself occupied in my mind i don't know about aldo would you well, say there's, there's, would there's you lots of things that so i was going to say there's, there's lots of things like being affected you know I, i've had you know probably six seven months of last year not working um, not earning money, not doing the trips, you know, that all has a massive impact um, down the line. But, you know, a lot of it I don't have control over. So we chat about controlling the controllables and uh, to quote like an old phrase of, of like the universe is change and life is judgment. Like, we, you know, you can say it's bad or good or whatever it is and however it's affected you, but you do ultimately can still try and have a, a choice. And by being locked down, everyone else was locked down. So I think it was much more for me about just getting on with the things that would make me function better, be better, um, or, or, or able just to sort of like plow through the days really. Um, fitness fitness, and, and that sort of stuff helped massively. You know, I was, I was ending up doing like two or three hours a day pretty much in the garden and more stuff than I would ever do. Mobility, I was stretching more. Um, Just basically everything slowed down a bit. But, you know, that's what, you know, to reiterate what Foxy said, if it wasn't COVID, 
it will be something else. You know, we live in, a, in a, an incredibly volatile and, and dynamic world where, it, where it, if it's not a virus, it could be warfare, it could be, you know, something else. You know, it's, it's, these things will always come. They'll always come. It's not just this one thing. It's just how It'll you deal with it. it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's but you, but it's really good, is it? Someone, someone's going to drop a nuclear bomb. <laughs> yeah. For these, but you know what I mean. The, the, the bad shit will always happen. Um, it's just you know the more you go through it, the more resilient you become to it. And if it's out of your control, then all you can do is is control the stuff that you've got in your power to control. Otherwise, you know what can you do? Would you say uh, the military life um, has certainly helped you cope in these situations? Yeah, yeah, I think so. I think so, definitely. I think we. I reckon it gives you that outlook doesn't it that you can get through it yeah i mean i don't think it obviously people being able to cope in this it's just it's individual but I, and i'm not you know i'm sure there's people that haven't been in the military that have dealt with it fine but it for for, for us calling upon our experience i think it's definitely helped you know we've i've been away for six to nine months at a time pretty much locked up not being able to do much um you know and when you do do something it's a little bit stressful so I think that's that's helped definitely with this I mean that doesn't take away from the fact that it's still been a very very odd time with with you know there is a level of you know not worry but you're like well I wonder I wonder what the outcome is going to be I wonder what you know what the next normal looks like I wonder whether these vaccines how quick they're going to come about and how quick we're going to go back to being able to do stuff like we always remembered we could and you know, there's always that. You're, you're still thinking the same as everyone else. It's just you're a little bit more in the now and realising that we're still, we're still living and we still need to enjoy the now and not worry about the future because it hasn't happened and not worry too much about the past because it's done and dusted and you're not changing it. No. You know, whatever your now is, just still enjoy it. You know, you might be in your house, but try. There's still something to enjoy, 100%. you just got to be a little bit positive. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. I mean, um, got some reader questions. As I say, from our YouTube videos, there were hundreds of questions. Um, and I've just sort of picked a few yesterday. Um, Ryan Heath says, it's so good to hear men talking about emotion and mental health difficulties in an open and honest way. But is that easier said than done? Aldo? Um, I, I don't know. I Like for me, Speaking personally, I um, have I've never been a sort of macho, alpha, chest beater sort of type of dude. Anyway, like it, it's you know it's not necessarily what I do. I've always been open to chatting, and and I know what Foxy's thinking is like you don't have a chest to beat. Um, <laughs> That's exactly what I was going to say. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, like for me, for me, like to my detriment, I wear my heart on my sleeve, and I you know I always chat about stuff and you know potentially that's why you know foxy and i chat a lot because that's the way i am so with foxy is but you know like when you when you go and do the things that that i've been doing certainly on like expeditions and trips or foxy has i think the more you do the less you require to be shouting about how hard you are and, and all the rest of it and ultimately as foxy said that you know, on the roar i can't remember the chat we were having about being on trips, you know, you can't be that that dickhead that's giving everyone shit because one day you'll be the one that needs to help. And there's there's never been truer words said. You know, you don't know what's around the corner, and how you're going to be whacked by it. And I, I think that's it's quite an important lesson. I think a message I would like to get out there is the fact that blokes do worry about it. You, you know, me and Aldo, we talk and we you know and it doesn't it's not like we sit down and hold hands and like go <laughs> deep into like chatting about how we're feeling we sit down maybe with a beer i mean you know we had some stressful times out on the narcos thing and we'd be sat on the balcony at the end of the day in in mexico which is a horrendous place and we'd just chat about the day chat about how we felt have a bit of a laugh stuff like that but what i'd like to say is you you know as guys you're you being able to talk and express what's going on in your head or in your body, you're prolonging your life. I genuinely believe that. And you don't, it doesn't, it doesn't remove away from the fact that you're still a gnarly individual, an individual, you're still a, you know, alpha male bloke. Cause I've got, 
a lot of friends. Me and Aldo have got a lot of mates, and some of the some of the hardest blokes I think I've ever met. You know, blokes in around the world, and and we still find the time to chat to chat chat about stuff. It doesn't remove us. We're not, you know, our masculinity is not being removed. It's yeah. it's just you know, it is something that needs to be done because the old school mentality of you know stiff up a lip don't talk about it ain't working because blokes are still taking their lives and so we may we have to be able to open up or get people to open up because it might you know the stiff up a lip might work for some but it's not working for a lot it's not working for a lot of people i've got a lot of mates as as aldo and, and mutual as well who've gone and walked out into the woods just before christmas and hung themselves and you're like that shit's not it's obviously not working mm. you know so, something needs to change and there needs to be another path opened up for people that need it and it doesn't remove anything away from you being a guy it doesn't remove anything away from you being a gnarly individual if that's what you want to be it's just a different approach yeah to well, i mean what would you like to see i mean because we always say open up and talk but it is so difficult for some people and obviously the conversation it's never been more open talking about mental health. I mean, it's, it's everywhere in the media at the moment, yet it's still the issue still happening. Is there, is there another step we need to go or is there now more time for actual things put in place rather than just talk about it, get it off your chest? I, I think there's... Sorry, you go. No, mate. Um, I, I think there's... Foxy probably knows more about it than I do, but, um, I, you know, from my point of view, it, it seems like, yes, it's okay to talk and everyone should talk. But it's it's like when is that? There's probably I'm guilty of it as well. There's probably ten or fifteen people in my my phone book that I probably should be speaking to, but I haven't picked up that phone for whatever reason. It's busy, like life's got in the way. But yeah, you're right. Maybe there's. I think I think ultimately, you know, people do need to give themselves the best um, foundations from wherever they're starting, and I, I think from my point of view, that's being outside. That's that's exercising. It's you know, it's it's getting out in nature, and lockdown did prove that it 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 does elevate you a little bit to maybe allow you to see sort of um, to see over the parapet because sometimes you can just be so involved in your quagmire of whatever that is that that you can't see a way out. Do you, do you reckon that's it, Proxy? Yeah, I think we I think there's a big the conversation has been going on on a grand scale. So as a as a society, everyone's aware of this and. There's a lot of people that are embracing it. I mean, what needs to happen now is because of that bigger conversation, I think smaller groups, your own networks need to start pulling together a bit. And there's a bit of work to be done. You can't just talk about it on a grand scale and then expect everything to just happen. You've got to go out there and actually make time for your mates and create a, an atmosphere and, an, and a, an environment where you feel comfortable with chatting about stuff. I mean, I've literally, I've just been on a three hour walk to get a few work coat phone calls done. And at the same time, I phoned up a few couple of lads I've not spoken to for ages, checked in, and then just realized that, do you know what, the next time we can, we're gonna meet up and have a few, you know, a few beers, it doesn't need to be that, but have a, have a few beers and just, and we just spoke, you know, I spoke to a few mates about how they're feeling, you know, lockdowns had an impact on work we've spoken about other people in the group that we've not chatted to for a while and you've got to put a bit of time and effort in and we don't but every now and again when you when it comes into your head it's probably worth having a chat with someone and organizing you know a day out a weekend or whatever it is because it makes people realize you, you're not alone and i think so so now like now that these big conversations are being had by society or by businesses industries whatever and that you know it's they're being told that they've got to do that now because it's it's in their remit to make sure that they look after their people but now the ball is firmly in the court of us really and we've got to make a bit of effort and put a bit of effort into actually make something happen and it's to, it's about creating those little groups you know those little networks of people and just reaching out every now and again you know you might might not want to but it, it makes a massive difference sometimes yeah. Um, Dawn 101 she says apologies for my ignorance but why do soldiers who have ser whom have served in Afghanistan and such all have beards is it a silent protest <laughs> no it's just uh, mate if anyone wants to know why I got a beard I spent years shaving 
I got to, when is. I first joined the Marines at 16, I was told I had to shave. I didn't even have any hair to shave. <laughs> so I ain't shaving anymore. I haven't had a wet shave in a long time. And it's got nothing yeah. to do with the protest. It's just, it is admin I can deal do without. And it tears your skin apart as well. And then the more, you've, the more you have a beard, the more you then think, God, my face looks really weird without it. Yeah, yeah it does, yeah. <laughs> At least, at least with a beard, I've got a chin that I can be proud of. <laughs> I, I grow mine to cover my double double chin. Um, <laughs> that's it. That's it. Uh, Brandon, um, I'd like to know more about why you left the forces and whether you had any regrets. Um, obviously, in the video, we know about your tale about, about the gas sales, Aldo. But he also wants to know what you turned your hand to, Jason, and um, how that went when you left. I'm leaving, I am... Um... Yeah, so I ended up, I did actually get, I left, was a bit lost for a, a period of time. Then I got given, I basically got given a job out of the kindness of someone's art. I wasn't right for it, but they said have a job and see how it goes and learn what you need to learn. And I was a sort of project slash logistics manager for a facilities management company. And it was pretty much like Aldo's gas salesman job where I was, not in i was in the wrong place and i was struggling with um it was it, to be fair it was a culture shock i'd gone from working in an all-male environment in a in the special forces you can sort of imagine what that was like to where i didn't have to worry about my p's and q's and whatnot and then i was in an environment where i did and i couldn't work it out and it was a struggle to begin with i actually spent so I did have a job actually, but I, and it was uh, fortunately for me at the time, it was, it was linked to the military. So they were, they were, they were a business that delivered facilities management, like cooking and cleaning to the military. So I had access to establishments and literally people in that business used to be like, where the, where is that bloke? Where's Mr. Fox? And I was literally in, I had access to all the military gyms, which are very well kitted out. And I'd just scurry away there and hide, turn my phone off and no one could find it. It's a running joke. Now, I'm still mates with a guy that gave me the job. He's the CEO. And he was like, mate, no one could find you. We, I knew where you were, but no one could find you. I became mates with all these lads that were in the army. Oh, how's it going? They're like, oh, I, used to, I used to blag it. I was like, they were like, are you in the military? I'm like, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm just, yeah, I'm moving around, blah, blah, blah. I wasn't. I'd left like a few years before. <laughs> Alda, do you just want to quickly remind people what the, um, in case they haven't seen the video, um, your British gas, or was it British gas or your, your tail anyway? Uh, it, it was just like, I think we were chatting in the video about like what you did. It's, it's easy to see someone where they are now and say, well, it's, you know, it's easy for them. But um, like, we, I think we were chatting about how hard it was to readjust from leaving the military and getting into normal jobs because all I'd ever wanted to do was be in the Marines since I was about 12 or 13 and then here I am out my own volition having made the choice to leave and got out and ended up basically I think the first job for months was trying to sell gas and electricity to to punters up in up in the northeast of Scotland and it like it was one of the most soul-destroying jobs because a I didn't like lying to people and b um, like I was so shit at sales that I wasn't making any money. I, I'd left <laughs> the military earning like, I don't know, 1100 quid a month and then went to earning like 200 quid a month or something because I was so crap at sales. Um, and then I had a door slammed in my face the last, the last day when I stopped working for them. And, and I, I basically just had this massive meltdown in this guy's front garden, like stripped all my uniform off through it at the door, like to, <laughs> doing my police in there and ended up like walking back to my car just like in my trout and, and these like weird blue work trousers and nothing else um <laughs> and then and then and then realized that i'd launched my keys at the guy's front door as well that were in my so i had to go back and apologize and then pick up my keys and then leave but um it was just i think we were chatting at the time about just how you know like how that i suppose i always had that viewpoint of where i needed to get to it's just you got to do the you got to do the hard yards and the graph to find out what it is you don't want to do. Well, you that made was a, one of those jobs. You made a good point, Jason, as well, about you learn more from your mistakes, right, and the failures. You don't, you don't learn from succeeding and doing well, you know? Yeah, you better, you, you, especially for anyone that's changing career, don't be downheartened by maybe 
thinking you're going into something that's awesome and then realizing it's not that's that's actually a good thing it's part of the journey you might see it as a negative but try and realize that you're just learning that you've just found something that you shouldn't be doing and that's you know at least you you've, you've come to that realization it's something that you <clears throat> you know if, if someone's listening now and they're going through that phase where it feels a bit dark trust me stick with it because in in a in a in a little bit of time you'll be doing what me and Aldo have just done and laugh about it and actually you'll suddenly realize that it was it all means something yeah um l4289 um how do you keep on top of your emotions especially something as red hot as anger any tips to keep calm i acknowledge it don't ignore it if you ignore it it'll come back with a vengeance and it won't go anywhere and you'll end up punching a hole in the wall or something stupid like that obviously <laughs> talking out of experience but um <clears throat> you got to, I, I, I tend to try and take some deep breaths you know when you get those we in the military they call them combat indicators but it's basically a, a warning sign that something about is about to change and you get them in yourself you know when you the red so if we're talking about anger the red mist the hairs on the back of your head whatever it is you can feel yourself go fuzzy i'd suggest you sort of like step away from the situation take a few deep breaths and think about what your next move is because ultimately there's another saying from the military which is you don't want to be rushing into your own death and that means take a chill pill and like understand that there's change coming and it's you know you need to think about something before you react you know we're all human. We still do it. I still do it, but I do. I try to be more aware of what's going on in my head. Mm. I think uh, the same, same with fear. Same with anxieties. You need to yeah. just, if something's changing, give it the respect. It's recognizing it, isn't it? Yeah, but we. Um, that's just. But the recognize it, the, the recognizing it comes from being a bit more conscious, being a bit more, like, in, if you feel a certain way. I've, have a think about it before you react because you'll always you know how many times do you regret a reaction that's what i was going to say so like a big a big one for dealing with anger is to think about all the times that you've been angry before and what an absolute fool you've made of yourself like i'm speaking from experience from gobbing off at that person you know who pulled out in front of you or you know like yeah and, and actually getting angry to the point of i'm not going to back down what's the point you know and it's I'm not talking about getting to a fist fight. I'm, I'm talking about getting to an embarrassing point where where I look ridiculous through my losing my temper and my cool. And you know, it happens. It happens sometimes on expeditions. Things get heated up, and and that happens. But actually, the embarrassment comes later when you then have to apologise for your behaviour. And that's you know, ultimately, that's now what you know if i'm about to get angry it's 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 probably what drives it more than anything else is to not do it it's, um, it's actually like, the embarrassment is actually what then drives even more anger but yeah. ultimately you look cool if you don't lose your cool yeah it's fine it's a good point um last of the reader questions agent harris you want to know the last time you were both genuinely scared Ooh, they, i've got i mean one of the times I was genuinely scared, I was with Aldo and it involved a black rhinoceros. <laughs> that was, uh, those things are angry and it charged. Unfortunately, they're also blind. So it didn't charge in the right direction and it missed us. So that was one. I had one last year with a, I might have mentioned it, but a grizzly bear. So anything to do with wildlife, big wildlife, puts the absolute heebie-jeebies up me. What happened with the grizzly bear? We just it was it was hungry and it chased us <laughs> and it, ultimately the, the 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 brief is from the wardens before you go out into these these places of wilderness they say no matter what you do whenever a bear confronts you stand tall and stand your ground you don't you run the thing's massive and you can't reason with wildlife aldo am i correct yeah yeah that's well, uh, we i was going to say so that time with the black rhino so i've got a black rhino charging at us which is blind and incredibly um, good hearing. And then I've got Foxy who's wide eyed and about the same size as a rhino charging at me as well. Um, so <laughs> that was, that, that was. Uh, do, do you remember it? The bloke, the bloke that was with us, the warden was like, ah, if, if it charges it, you stand behind. And he was like, ah, you can stand behind like a blade of grass. I'm like, that's doing nothing. I'm like, ah, yeah. like where's the biggest tree? Anyway, yeah, all, all I had to do was, all I had to outdo, do was outrun Foxy. 
um, but I, yeah, I get, we, you know, we've, um, I do a few of the expeditions and things and certainly like on the narcos, um, I was genuinely scared. You do it, you get on with it, but on the shoot with Foxy, there was a couple of times when, you know, things could have become quite messy and horrible. And, and I think when you're in the middle of it, you, you're obviously dealing with the physical attributes of, of fear or excitement or whatever, you know, you what that feels like physiologically, but then it's also at the end of when that thing happens, when you're going through the, the motions of replaying the tapes at the end of the day or the week or whenever that incident happened. And that's ultimately when, you know, when you can, when you then think about how bad the situation was. Um, so I think maybe the same as Foxy, you know, that the sort of narco stuff and then inside a volcano when it was, was erupting was, you know, I was almost down on the bottom of it. And again, it was, you know, anything to do with wildlife and nature, I can kind of compartmentalize as, as, as an objective danger and, and, and be rightfully scared of it. Um, yeah, it's, there's, there's no shame in that. We, we both chat about it, you know, we both are regularly quite, quite scared in our jobs, but that's, that's normal. It's what keeps the us thing alive. Is with that sort of wildlife stuff, and I mean, I, I wasn't in the volcano, I can only imagine it's absolutely petrifying, but when it comes to mother nature and animals you can't reason with them you know like if there's a situation going on with people there's you have got an opportunity most of the time to try and calm something down if something looks a bit you know sketchy because there's people and you know that they they do possess some form of reason about them and you can sort of maybe help hopefully sort of turn it into a positive but when it comes to like you can't turn around to a volcano and tell it to stop erupting or you can't turn yeah. around to I tell you, I tell you what was quite was quite um, scary was out in the middle of the Atlantic when we capsized and we both like I certainly did. You know, you're you're dealing with it, so you're not like sat there just terrified, not doing anything. You're scared, but you're doing all the things that you need to do to stay alive. And uh, you know, just like big seas capsize nighttime, um, and it just makes you feel quite insignificant and, and quite small, smaller. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's, it's quite interesting. <laughs> Neither of you have talked about obviously your your military life because obviously getting fired out of bullets. I mean, for, for most people, that would be the most terrifying thing in, ever to experience. That you're talking about grizzly bears and and the ocean. Yeah, Foxy's um, got much more experience of that than I have. No, nah, but it's just yeah, but we've got the same experience in, about how to mitigate against. You get trained very well, and there are things that you can do to make sure that you are putting yourself in a safer position. You know how you move across ground, how you how you, you know, it's all to do with tactics. That, that mit your tactics that you get taught as a young soldier mitigate against you getting hurt. And that you, and you, you, you've got so much knowledge about how to do that, that it gets rid of the, it, it helps sort of dispel the fear to a certain degree. So that's why we don't bring that up because you were taught to do something and you, you're taught to do it well as well. And um, so that's less scary, you know. It's, it's probably scary. quite a good, Good thing that you brought up there, Foxy, is about knowledge dispels fear, and that's that's so true. I think the majority of people base their fear, base their anger, base their everything on what might be, and and also um, and and based on that fear, as opposed to dealing with with facts. And oftentimes, you know, Foxy's been in some horrible situations, um, and I have as well. Where where the, when you're in it it's not as bad as when you're thinking about what happens then because you're just going through motions you're you're in survival mode right making it up as well with, yeah. with without any knowledge you're like oh this must it's going to be horrendous because you haven't you don't know anything you don't know what it's like that that knowledge dispels fear ironically actually is is a motto of of a of a unit in the royal air force and, i mean they <laughs> They don't ever deal with fear, apart from this one unit, which is the number one, they're called the number one parachute training school, which is where you learn to parachute. And they, their motto is knowledge dispels fear. So they're obviously, de they are dealing with something that's actually quite petrifying, throwing yourself out of a plane. But yeah. what they do is they just train you up. They, they do everything on the ground. You do lectures, you, you, you do everything. Before you get to that point where you're launching yourself out of a perfectly normal plane, they give you so much knowledge that actually it makes that experience less scary because you're yeah. better prepared for it. Um, one last question before we go on to our quick fire round. Um, what have you taken away from 2020 that um, 
will make your life better going forwards? Anything you've learned in particular about yourself or about society or whatever? I think um, the one thing I hope it's given everyone is that we're all in, in we're all in life together. This it has made people you know you could bump into someone now that I don't even know and the topic of conversation. Yes, it probably would default to COVID, but and people are probably sick to death of talking about it. But it's made people realise that we have got a common bond. We you know when things happen to humans, it happens to us all. And we should remember that going forward, you know. But for me, I think because of the lockdowns and because there's been a lack of work at times, I've been busy as well. So I've been lucky, you know, in comparison to some. But because there has been lockdowns, I have re- I've appreciated, I've, I've said it before at the beginning, but I've appreciated the quiet, boring times. There's, there is just as important. I think for me, um, lockdown just reinforced in that 2020 it, re- it reinforced a few of my core values. Um, the, you know, the first ones about being locked in the bunker. You know, there's, it was proof again that exercising, being outside, and human interaction are like cornerstones to a good foundation of like um, sort of mental, physical well-being. Um, so it reinforced that, and I guess it also reinforced a lot of what I believe about controlling the controllables and dealing with what you can deal with and, and the rest of it trying not to, to let it affect me but um yeah it, I mean it's it's been a tough year for for lots of people in lots of different ways but you know previous years and people's mistakes and things that happen don't dictate what happens for the rest of their life so yes it was something that happened and if we can then we all need to push on potentially onto the next disaster <laughs> <laughs> Lovely. It's going to happen. We just need oh, to be ready. Oh, and... Grim Reaper there. <laughs> you do motivational talks, Aldo. Um, well, hey, we're all going to die. <laughs> that's, that's in the post. <laughs> um, so we're going to end with this. This, this section, this last bit is called Head to Head, but it's basically how well you think you know each other. Cool. Um, I'm just going to ask you a series of questions. Just shout out whether you think it, it applies to you or you think it applies to the other person. And obviously, if you want to argue it, you're more than welcome to. Um, so first of all, um, who's funnier? Me. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> right, best joke. Yeah. Uh, I, do you know what? It interesting. Come down to joke. <laughs> interestingly, though, humour is one of those things that we'll both use to defuse situations. Um, so we're probably. He might be a bit funnier than me. Who's more likely to lose their temper? Me. Oh, I don't know. Actually, I don't know. <laughs> say that I, uh, everyone everyone says me you know I, back in the past I've always been known to have a bit of a short fuse which now sounds like I'm a hypocrite after telling people <laughs> to chill, chill the f out but I say yeah I say me but then Aldo has been known to I mean you know just be grumpy as soon as, soon as any form of sunlight hits him hits him he goes into a bad mood but he he can lose his he can lose his cool he lost his cool with me in uh, Mexico over a lighter believe it or not yeah he didn't yeah. speak to me for like didn't speak to me for a good 45 minutes to an hour because he was in a he was in a mood and as an example um we both go into this like hardcore thing that happened then and then afterwards again talking about anger and all the rest of it i i felt so embarrassed about that situation so yeah i'm, I'm probably up there evens Even. um, who can grow the better beard uh in it. <laughs> um, he, does, he does it regularly. I, I don't. They, they, it annoys me. Beard, beardage annoys me. I like it sort of trimmed short. Still no wet shaver. Um, who's harder? <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> that's, that's, that, just comes, that just comes down to size. Aldo's very small. Robust. <laughs> I wouldn't like to be in a scrap with him, that's for sure. He's about twice my height. <laughs> <laughs> we wouldn't ever get into a fight. Um, okay, then we'll go to the next one. Who's better looking? Oh. It depends. Uh, beauty is in the eye of the beholder. That's true. Yes. I'd yeah. say my mum would probably say him, <laughs> and the rest of the world would say him. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. um, who can lift the most weight in the gym? Ooh. 
lift it as in iron. Yeah, yeah, lifting tin, shifting tin. Shifting tin. It depends on what we're doing. Boxy. It depends on what we're doing. Um, who wears the trousers in the friendship? Uh, well, I think I, no, no, that's not true. We take turns. <laughs> yeah. Take turns wearing a skirt. I mean, he does wear a skirt. He's Scottish. <laughs> Obviously. <laughs> um, okay, last one then. Um, who's more likely to get drunk and embarrass themselves? Uh, probably oh, me. No, no. It's funny that I should bring up a picture right now and put it onto the. <laughs> <laughs> That's dangerous. <laughs> you know the one that I made a sticker of earlier today. Yes, yeah. <laughs> so is the answer out though? Then. Uh, I'm, I think. No, I think we've we've both been brought up in. In like mega boozy culture in the Marines, and and certainly um, it highlights my playful, very immature side. So it's, it's probably folks. He's got a good way of like controlling it. Yeah, but I think you have as well. I know, admittedly, there's been a few times. There was one he went to a wedding like a year or so ago, and he ended up in a bush upside down asleep. I don't know what's going on there. But then I've ended up in situations. You know, I've been in woken up in bushes and. Been in a right state, yeah. But I think now we've 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 gone past that. Getting older, right? Join, yeah, exactly. Evens, exactly. guys. It's been great. Um, brilliant. Um, thank you ever so much for yeah taking part in this. Um, and I'll see you all soon. Yeah, yeah. nice. Cheers. Cheers, mate. It's been good. Cheers, Thanks bye. for having me.